on co-simulation for power electronics design with multi-sim and lab view. Everything I'm showing you today is included in the design guide. You can download off the web. It's available at ni.com slash power dev and quite a few examples in there that will walk you through getting started with co-simulation for your power electronics development. And there's also instructions in there on how you can sign up for the beta program um, and request access to the tools. There is a limited uh, beta program available, uh, so you can email us if you're interested in that. All of this is available at ni.com slash powerdev, P-O-W-E-R-D-E-V. So let's start out with a very simple RLC circuit in multi-SIM. And the first thing I want to show you is the component library. As you may know, multi-SIM is a SPICE environment. Uh, one of the uh, groups you're going to want to go to is this power group where you'll find your basic uh, transistor and transistor diode. These are ideal switch models uh, with uh, on and off resistances. And uh, you also may want to look back in the basic folder for your non ideal RLC components. Uh, these are very important uh, for modeling power electronic systems. For example, um, in this inductor, I can specify the series resistance of the inductor, um, which is going to affect my simulation results. And in my resistor, I can model the capacitance and so on. So these non-ideal components are useful for capturing the uh, correct behavior of my active circuit components and resistors. Uh, the next thing I want to do is show you how to make an interface to LabVIEW. To do that, you're going to want to go to Place on Schematic HBSC Connector. Drop that down. Call it uh, to LabVIEW here give it a name and you'll notice it showed up over here on the left on this tree this is where I can hear it um, I can set the mode there to either input or output once at the mode it'll show up in the correct part of the tree and I can play around with where it uh, where it lands okay so that's how you make an interface to LabVIEW to communicate once you've done that you can drop down one of these multi sim design nodes this is going to be on your control design and simulation palette, which I've shown here um, under um, external model interface multi-sim. And you drop this down and configure the name of the multi-sim design you want to interface to. So I've actually already done that in this case. Um, if you want to see that, you go to select multi-sim design. And this is the name of my IRC circuit file. So I'm ready to run. I've got an interface between LabVIEW and Multisim. When I hit the run button here, Multisim is going to start running in the background and I'll be able to view my circuit response and yeah, sure enough, you can see my typical second order uh, circuit response that I'd expect. Uh, one thing I want to show you about this environment is LabVIEW offers both uh, variable time step, ODE solvers, uh, BDF, which is a, um, a DAE solver, and uh, fixed time step solvers like RK1 through 4, which are useful for real time simulations. Now, keep in mind that all of this that I'm showing you is a desktop co simulation environment. The goal of these tools is to enable you to design and prototype and validate your LabVIEW control code. Uh, before you actually compile it down to a target. So these tools do run slower than real time. But later on, we'll be showing you in the loop simulation tools that let you run uh, faster than real time. Okay, so let's go to a little bit more advanced circuit here. This is a buck converter. And I want to click on these blue components here. The blue color tells me that this is a uh, vendor part. Uh, this is a national semiconductor. I can see the um, parameterization of the SPICE model. You can go in there and edit the SPICE model if I chose to. Usually it's just a matter of configuring parameters off the date. So this is going to give me a higher fidelity uh, type of simulation performance um, here by simulating more precisely the uh, behavior of my switching components. So I've got a basic buck converter with a PWM generator. In this case, I'm generating the PWM within uh, multisim. I'll show you that configuration. It's going to be a 1 kHz PWM. When it's on, it's going to put out 15 volts to the gate of this transistor through this 50 ohm gate resistor. So let's go ahead and pull up the LabVIEW diagram for this uh, buck converter control system. Um, 
let me style this here so you can see the front panel in block diagram. A little more complex. I've actually got the ability to either do a um, custom transfer function for my control system within LabVIEW Control Design and Simulation. In this case, I've just dropped down a zero pole gain uh, block that I've configured. Um, but the important thing I want to show you here is the ability actually to put LabVIEW FPGA code because most of the time your control systems for your inverters are going to be running in LabVIEW FPGA. And so this is my actual LabVIEW FPGA code. And that's one of the big benefits of this tool chain is I develop my code in co-simulation and I preserve that code investment all the way throughout my development and I can validate all my code before I actually compile it to the FPGA, which helps me you know, deal with the fact that FPGA compiles do take a long time compared to processors. If I go to my VI node setup here, I can set the discrete timing information for this FPGA uh, sub VI. In this case, it's set to minus one. That means it's actually going to take the timing from the settings on my front panel. So this discrete step size is going to determine the period at which that FPGA code runs. So this enables me to emulate the timing performance of my FPGA application. I'm going to go ahead and run here and we'll watch this closed loop simulation uh, running. You'll notice on the block diagram there's some feedback loops that's feeding back my uh, voltage and that's what I'm trying to regulate here is the output voltage with my PD. And you can see my pulse width modulation happening at that one kilohertz rate. The blue signal there that looks stair-stepped is my PWM command and of course that's uh, stepping. You can see when it's on the inductor current rises, when it's off it falls. It looks stair step because that's running at only the one kilohertz rate and I'm monitoring my power and so on. If I want to while it's running I can zoom in and look at the signals a little closer. So you can see the energy transfer when I open and close that switch uh, to the inductor in my buck converter. Okay and you know of course I can change the set point, I can change my tuning and uh, see how that affects the response of the system. Okay so now we've seen a closed loop control system running. I want to next show you a flyback converter. Uh, this is interesting because it contains some magnetics models for the transformer. Um, I can model non-ideal cores of course, I need to set the, trains, the turns ratio, uh, the leakage inductances and resistances, and so forth. This is important for getting accurate uh, results on the simulation of this flyback converter. So let me go to LabVIEW now and show you uh, that uh, control system. And what I want to actually show you here today is a little bit of more advanced programming. There is a LabVIEW electrical power analysis library or toolkit that's in Pioneer stage today and that's available for you. And I want to show you that uh, library real quickly. If I go here to electrical power in that down, you'll see I have a, and I'm going to turn on my context help in LabVIEW so I can see some help while I'm doing that. Um, you're going to see uh, all kinds of um, IEC standard electrical power measurements in this library. Um, these are most of these are designed for compatibility with UL or IEC standards. Um, there's a great uh, realm of IP available to help you analyze the power from your inverter circuits. And uh, we're seeing a lot of applications that combine this kind of power analysis with the um, with the control system together in the same system. And that's very doable. Typically, the FPGA uses is used to resample the data from your 60 or 50 hertz power system, and then the resampled data is then processed on the real-time processor. That's the that's the uh, palette I'm showing you today. Is this real-time processor palette? So I go to this um, harmonics analysis palette, and um, actually drop down just a simple one to measure the total harmonic distortion. Put that on the diagram wire that up. In this case I've configured it for a single phase power system and I'm going to wire this to display the total harmonic distortion. 
and uh, just a simple example of doing some basic power analysis. But you also see the voltage spectrum displayed when I run this. And you're going to see some energy once the system stabilizes at that 1 kilohertz switching frequency. And you see the harmonics of that 1 kilohertz switching frequency as well. So I've got a 10% uh, PWM command on that switch on my flyback converter. I can see the output voltage responding as the switch goes on and off and energy transfers from the primary to the secondary winding. Uh, I've got my total harmonic distortion calculation. And in the, the voltage spectrum, you can definitely see the harmonics at the uh, integer order uh, multiples of my 1 kilohertz uh, switching frequency. And I can, of course, uh, see my response of my flyback converter. I should have changed the command so you could see it uh, responding to a different command. You could sweep this and measure the, the uh, response of the converter from PWM command to output voltage, for example. Look at the uh, output voltage ripple and so on. And then use that to help design your uh, control system. Okay, next I want to switch to a three-phase power system. This is a single-level inverter with a three-phase load. Uh, the output has a LC load filters on it, and it has a three-phase uh, load. And uh, so what I want to do is set my load resistances here, so I have a balanced three-phase circuit to 250 ohms. Save that. As soon as I make a save on my sim application, when I run the LabVIEW, it's going to use the, the, the updated code. So with this, I'm going to go to my single level inverter block diagram and show you the control code for the single level inverter. So I've got my three phase grid power being generated and simulated. Now this actual control code, I actually directly copied from a single board Rio control application for an actual Semicron six pack inverter. And this is a, just a very basic sine triangle PWM application where I have a three-phase PLL that's measuring the grid uh, voltage and frequency. I'm uh, generating a triangle waveform. I do a simple comparison. Is the sine waves that are phase locked with the grid, A, B, and C, are they greater than my triangle? If so, I turn on the switches. I have some delay on the low side uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, prevent overshoot. Um, I have, um, so it basically means the upper and lower switches don't switch exactly the same instant. Um, I have uh, PID, and you'll notice uh, that these uh, LabVIEW functions are set for different rates. This control loop runs with a period of 2 microseconds or 500 kilohertz, because that's what it's actually running in the FPGA, whereas my RMS calculation um, actually runs at 50 kilohertz because that's the sampling rate of my analog input in this system. And again, you can access all of the code and uh, dive into that and see it. And this is my actual live VFPJ code. In fact, I can even insert probes and breakpoints and things like that. While I'm... So let me go ahead and run this uh, three phase inverter application. You're going to see some interesting startup behavior here because in my control system I actually don't have anything programmed to handle this case when I don't have an R calculation yet because that takes uh, the way it's programmed I don't give an RMS update until the first cycle is completed so that's not until 16 milliseconds in which means that uh, RMS is zero in that time and one of the things you'll notice is my um, my PID output is actually uh, ramping up and it's going to rail out at the max value before the RMS uh, first calculation occurs. So the great thing is I'm able to see the exact response of the system with my exact LabVIEW FPGA code, with my tuning of my PLL in my PID, and I'm able to easily draw up uh, an accurate model of my switching power system using multi-SIM. So look, well, we just got an RMS update and you'll notice that PID responded quickly and dropped that output down, but you see in that DAB, um, I actually overshot uh, the, uh, the grid voltage with my load output voltage. 
And if I run this now, you'll see that um, the uh, PID is still in track. It's going to take a few cycles for the system to uh, lock on and, and track the response. Uh, and you'll notice that my PLL frequency is tracking down to 60 hertz. So that's uh, converging nicely. And um, it's going to take a few cycles for my PID to actually adjust these amplitudes correctly to, uh, to match. So hopefully this gives you a good feel for environment. I can see my switching PWM signals there and so on.